Good evening. Welcome to the Raymond Select Board meeting for Tuesday, the 30th of June, 2015. I have a motion to have unanimous consent. I don't never know how to word that, Joe. Unanimous consent. I seek unanimous consent. I seek unanimous consent to allow folks from out of town <coughs> to speak. Second. Motion. No. So moved. No. Since you asked me unanimous consent, as long as there's no objection. Oh. Seeing no objection, it passes. Or with unanimous consent is granted. Right. Thank you, Joe. First order of business is the election of the chair, the vice chair, and the parliamentarian for the upcoming year. Um, we did have an election. Um, Joe Bruno um, won a seat on the select board. Uh, there was one seat open. Um, so every year after the election, we do hold uh, election for our chairman, vice chair, and parliamentarian. Is there a motion? I make a motion that Mike Reynolds serve as chair. Second. Any other nominations? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Three with one abstention. I'll nominate Teresa Sadak to be vice chair. Second. Any other nominations? Seeing none, all those in favor? Four zero. And I'll elect Joe Bruno to be parliamentarian. Second. Any other nominations? All those in favor? 4 0. Thank you all. So, seeing I get my job back, um, I have a motion for the minutes dated May 12, 2015. So moved. Second. Any suggestions, corrections? All those in favor? Passes 4 0. Motion to approve the minutes dated June 5th, 2015. Moved. Second. Any suggestions, corrections? All those in favor? 4 0. Thank you. <coughs> I'm going to take an item out of order. I'm um, going to move under new business item H to the forefront. Consideration of a proclamation recognizing Civil War Medal of Honor recipient Daniel S. Milliken. Um, Don, do you want to give a little background on this? Yes, um, it was unknown, at least to the town, that we had a recipient <coughs> of the uh, Medal of Honor who was uh, at one time a Raymond resident. I think uh, Mr. Milliken was actually a Saco uh, native. He served meritoriously in the uh, Civil War, was awarded this high high honor, high recognition for his uh, uh, gallant service. And, uh, but as I say, unbeknownst to the town, um, the, the, the grave that he's, uh, he's uh, buried in uh, at Riverside Cemetery is not uh, marked in any particular uh, way to, to make anybody aware of this service. And so the American Legion, I think it came to their attention, and I don't know how, if there is a representative here this evening from the Legion, but, but they, they discovered this, got in touch with the the town clerk, I believe, and uh, they've been working together to come up with a, an appropriate recognition from the town and uh, from the Legion and uh, the community at large. And so we've drafted a proclamation, which I, th I think you're going to, to read into the record and, and make available um, to the Legion, to the town, and to present also at the uh, ceremony, which is coming up on the 4th. But um, so, so it was uh, something that was really a, a surprise and a, and a great surprise for the community to have somebody uh, in our community who had uh, that distinguished service record and that, as I say, that high decoration. And uh, so this will be a ceremony to recognize um, you know, Mr. Milliken's service in the Civil War. I know we have somebody in the audience. Would you like to speak to this this evening? We, we can give you a, a handheld microphone so you can stay right in your seat. No, I can speak up. Um, we, well, we need you for the TV cameras. Oh, I see. So. That way they can hear you on at home as well. Okay. Introduce yourself, please, and where you're from. Yes, good evening. My name is Mel Greenier. I'm the commander of uh, American Legion Field Island Post 148 in Wyndham. And we have many veterans from Raymond that belong to our post as well. And <clears throat> this was first brought to our attention by the National Medal of Honor Committee, uh, seeking out uh, veterans who are buried around the country 
and asking us to take and check on the status of their grave sites. And in so doing so, we found a plain stone with basically his birth date and the date that he died and not a heck of a lot in between. So we, we thought that we would take on the project to take and raise monies so we could have a proper memorial for him. And we contacted a memorial company in South Portland. We gave them a design. And basically, the design is on, on uh, about the ship that he served on, the USS Ironsides, New Ironsides, which was a metal-clad ship. So uh, the, uh, the monument com company in South Portland created with lasers and so forth this beautiful monument that I guess it's in place, and we're, we're going to dedicate it on July the 4th. And this, this has been a very rewarding uh, uh, thing for us uh, to be involved in this. Uh, it's received statewide attention from the other Legion and VFW posts, and every chance that we could, we've talked it up, and we've had it placed in the newspapers and hoping for a great turnout on Saturday. And I'm honored to be here, and I thank you very much for participating with us in, in this very uh, memorable event. Thank you very much. Um, if I might ask you to, do you, do you have a time um, and um, some of the uh, folks that will be coming and, and attending, part of what the outline of the ceremony, could you? Yeah, Danielle Loring has been uh, coordinating this with uh, Dave Tangway, who's my adjutant. And uh, basically we were told that at 9 o'clock there would be a ceremony, and we've invited the uh, state commander and some of the state officers from the American Legion, a uh, local VFW commander, and, and our own people to show up. I don't know how great the crowd will be, but uh, also uh, uh, our District 2 commander, who's in Naples, we're hoping that he shows up as well. He said that he would. So we, uh, we are also expecting the local Boy Scouts, I understand. Yes, Bo yes Boy Scouts. Yep. John, and also <coughs> the, uh, the military that is currently encamped at Camp Hines have been invited, so there could be a, right. I would expect that, that a good number of those folks may attend, and uh, I'm just judging from when I've gone up there and, you know, thank them for their, for their service for various projects, but th there could be a lot of folks there, you know, a hundred or more, I would guess. Yeah, and, and we've also invited the third Maine, which is a Civil War reenactor uh, group. They'll be there in their, in their uh, uniform of, of that, you know, that time period, so. And it's at Riverside Cemetery, which is on Plains Road, um, in Correct. Raymond, which is um, also near the Boy Scout camp. For those of you who don't know that which, which road Plains Road is, it's near the, the Boy Scout camp on the corner of Webb's Mills Road, um, just up from, from Webb's Mills Road or, or 85. Other questions? Comments? No, you asked, you asked the question I was wondering. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I'll read the proclamation um, that will be um, also read at the ceremony on Saturday and uh, so proclamation commemorating and recognizing the award of the Civil War Medal of Honor to Daniel S. Milliken whereas on July 4th 2015 the town of Raymond Maine honors Civil War Medal of Honor awardee Daniel S. Milliken and whereas Mr. Milliken served as a quarter gunner on the USS New Ironsides from December 1864 to January 1865 in the Battle of the Fort Fisher, North Carolina. And whereas Mr. Milliken was commended for highly meritorious uh, con conduct during the several engagements with Fort Fisher in December 1864 and January 1865 and whereas Mr. Milliken was awarded the Medal of Honor on August 30th, 1870, and whereas in 2015, with a continuing effort of members of the American Legion Field Allen Post 148, as well as the assistance of the Raymond Town Office staff, a footstone to commemorate Mr. Milliken's commendation has been set on his grave site and now, therefore, I, as Chairman of the Board of Selectmen for the Town of Raymond, and on behalf of our Select Board, do hereby proclaim that the Town of Raymond 
does officially recognize the outstanding efforts of Mr. Milliken during the Battle of Fort Fisher. So, thank you all. Um, I guess I would ask if we could make a formal um, uh, motion to accept this proclamation on, as part of the full board. Move that we accept that proclamation. Second. All those in favor? 4-0. Thank you. Don? We will see that you have a, a copy in a properly, uh, um, I guess, package for ceremonial presentation and we will see that the uh, American Legion and uh, I think there was an idea that it should be sent on to the national organization as well. So we have uh, extra copies. Um, did you wish that he... Six copies. Did you wish that Mike signed these yes. tonight? So we can do that and, uh, and we'll see that they get distributed uh, appropriately. mentioned having one of them sealed with wax and tied. We'd still like to have that. Yes, if we can. Okay. And the other is, for reading purposes, would it be a bit easier if I made it in aerial font for you to read in the sunshine? No, I'll practice. Okay. No memory. <laughs> Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Those of us that are taking some part, large or small, in this, um, what would you recommend as the uniform? Do we wear a tie or do we? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to wear my, my hat and uh, yeah, a shirt and a tie and okay. white, white shirt. You can always wear your service uniform, Sam. Mm -hmm. I couldn't button it. You don't think just have a tie. Dress however you feel appropriate. Sue? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you, and I'll see you on Saturday. Thank you. And I believe Sam will see you as well. So. Okay. May I be excused? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. One of the reasons I brought it earlier in the agenda was so that you didn't have to, to hang out with us. You're welcome to stay if you'd like. Thank you. It's very exciting stuff. Yeah, really exciting today. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're pretty excited about it. It's a proper thing to do, and yep. we're fortunate enough to be contacted and be involved. From here, I'm going to go up and try to find the cemetery. Yeah. <laughs> it's about uh, mile? To a mile and a half. Maybe, yeah. maybe not even that. When you when you take a right, get to the bottom of the hill. Yeah. It's that right left there. right there. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. Yeah. thank you. Can't miss it. Right on your left. Thanks. It is. So I'm going to take another item out of order. I'm going to go to unfinished business. Um, A, tax acquired property update. Sue, would you mind stepping up to the microphone and introducing yourself? Hi there, I'm Sue Carr, the deputy tax collector. Okay, so we have a wonderful list from you. Um, in what I think is a, a, a pretty good format. I think it helps us understand what's going on. Um, so all of these properties on this list have liens on them already, is that correct? Yes. So all of these properties have liens. And then what we've done is we've contacted folks and we've tried to get them to enter into a payment system that will pay off their loan in a, or their, their back taxes in a minimum of five years yes. while staying current with their current taxes to the, however that works. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and most of these folks current? Yes. Um, <clears throat> I sent out letters the last time we met. You wanted me to send out letters to all of them to just reinforce that they have to make monthly payments. <coughs> the only one is um, Anthony Beatty, which is the second one down. He's the one that I used to have to call and make phone calls to. He has not made a payment in t uh, since March, except for today I received his $500 payment. So you received his March, his April payment? Yes, today. Was it his March payment or his April payment? His April. Yeah. Um, and is that April taxes? 
pay his April taxes? His April payment, and not his April taxes. Right, but doesn't he make a payment plus his April? His payments include that April payment. payment. Yeah. So his taxes. So he would have got new taxes of. In April, he would have got a thousand dollar tax bill or two thousand, and only made a five hundred dollar payment. Right. So he's not going to pay off in five years. N well, he would if he made his monthly payments, but he never makes them monthly. It's sporadic. What about January, February? Did he get those, or did you just get April's? No. Before that, he made a payment in October. So you have one payment in October, nothing until April. Nothing until March. <coughs> October, you would have gotten more taxes, which right. you put it on here. So he's not consistent. All right. So at that, he's not even making his yearly payments. He's not even making his yearly payment, okay. no. Okay. Anybody else having issues like that? Um, no, everybody else that has a payment plan are very good and make their plan. James Lewis? James Lewis, I cannot find. I do not have a payment plan for him. I have sent out letters to him. There's uh, Daniel also on the deed. I have tried to find him. I can't find him. So that one I have no idea. And then there's a Jane... Parker, can't find her. She was li living in an apartment in Thompson, but I have, I found the owner of the property. I contacted him. He told me he has a maintenance company that takes care of getting the rent and stuff like that, and that they would contact me, but they never have. But he's still the owner. But he's still the owner of Wish in the apartment she was living in, so. Okay, but not, right, because it's just vacant land that, yes. that is here yeah. in that one. So I tried to find her that way, and I cannot find her. And Square J Realty, I have no idea what's going on with that one. He's never contacted me, but I guess he's been in contact with Danielle, so. But no payment. But no payment. Okay. And then Deep Cove Shores, which is Mike Hugo. He was in bankruptcy. The bankruptcy has been dismissed. So I think he called you, Mike. He did. I talked to him Monday or yesterday. Yeah. And he had his own plans on how to deal with it. I believe we should try to send, he does have a mortgage on this property, and I think we should send it to the bank and tell them that, the town is looking to acquire the property, and usually they will pay they the will, taxes. They will pay. Right. Yeah. Um, because they're he, second behind the town, aren't they? Yes, if they're notified. Right. They're notified. And I didn't know that he had a mortgage on that until he went into bankruptcy. Um, my understanding, you and it sounds like you've been updated, is he just got out of bankruptcy. Yes, he just dismissed it. Yeah. He will be in touch with you to set up his payment plan, and he expects to start his payment plan in July. In July. Yeah. If he does not, you will bring it back to us in September. We okay. We will take him to the next step. That's basically what I told him. All right. Because I don't know if he'll ever – he does owe $52,117. Oh, yeah. But if he followed this payment plan, he could catch up. Maybe. So, he's going to work with you. Okay. That's what he told me he would work with you. He's coming up this weekend. He's going to come find you. And but we're closed. He's going to find you before our next meeting and make sure okay. that everything is square. Okay. So, I will ask you back at the next meeting on that one specifically. Okay. Um, Bell Enterprises. Yeah. Is that one payment for all of those? That 200? They're all owned by... That's what I was wondering as well. The payment he had before was $100 for the first one. That was just land. 
850 a month for the other one and 50 for the third one down on Deep Cove Shores. Oh, no, we're, we're past oh, no. No. Uh, It's at Sorry. the bottom. Thou Enterprises, Tenney Hill Estates. Oh. There's like she, um, she moved on without you, Sue. Sorry. She moved on, yes. Yeah. <laughs> that one is 200 for each one, but it comes out that she owes very little. Her dad owned the property. Her dad just passed away. And right now they're doing the finance and she's sending me just 200 until she knows exactly where she stands and goes through probate. So the 200 sort of applies to all of them? Yes. Sort of? Sort of. What I've been doing is some of them when they get down to one year only having $50 left, I pay it off so that that year's paid off and then I apply the rest of it to the rest of them. So hopefully that will go through probate. Joe? Our policy is they need to pay off in two years. Is that correct? Five. Five, Five. years? We plus what they currently correct. get billed for. It's keeping them current. Is what I'm yeah, saying. right. We let some of these people really yep. get out of hand. Yeah, so I think that's why I really wanted Sue to be able to speak to who's late and who's not. Right. Um, She's really knocked this list down. And it's active. It sounds like it's active. So yeah. I'm uh, I'm of the opinion that, that BD is done. He's been on this list. For a while. And, yeah. and Sue brings him up constantly about maybe sometimes chasing him. It's not our job to chase him. Well, it seems like every time he's threatened, he makes a payment. Yeah. So I think we just start the procedure and say, hey, we're done. And I would say you start the procedure on all the no's. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have sold land before with can't find. Mm -hmm. So we did that a few years back. We had we had a couple of properties that you know we spent some time trying to find. So I guess the next step would be send them to the conservation commission. Okay. See if there's any value to those those can't finds. Can't finds. Yep. Good. Or don't knows can't yep. finds and those are all land. All land, yes. Um, I don't think you send the the BD one to the conservation. I think no, that would be that would be a that is property. We wouldn't, that's we wouldn't want to take that on, would we? Not yet. So I also have one that's not on this list that's been foreclosed on, and it tried to go to auction last time around, and it's been put in the town's name. Can we put that on the list also? For back for auction, yes. Okay, good. And I think anywhere where you need to contact the bank, you need to contact the bank and let yep. them know that we're going to take over the property here unless we get a tax payment. If you know someone has a mortgage. Yeah. Most of these do not. Right. Um, but if the Deep Cove Shores one does not set up his payment plan by the next meeting, that's the next step. Okay, okay. He needs to set it up and be paying. I am, I, by, by law, I do have to contact the bank and let them know that, yep. you know, right now we will take his payment arrangement as long as he makes the payments, but. Yeah, but he hasn't, you know, he's got a payment arrangement which he, which he hasn't been paying no. through bankruptcy, so. Through bankruptcy, yes. So then if you come back to us in September with the answers to the question from the Conservation Commission. Mm -hmm. And then we would go to the next step, I believe, which would be selling. Okay. So we would be looking at a fall sale unless, you know, sending out to bid unless these folks come, you know, at least those four properties, right? Five yeah. properties. Yeah. Is that enough, Sue? I think so. Um, so can I have a motion to allow Sue to go to the next step in the process? On these so moved. Did Four you, properties. Did you want to add anything else? Look at your. Okay. Nope. I, uh, most of them are really good at paying. Do we want to spell out which properties they are in the motion? Though? Yeah, that's right. I think you, I think you should. Okay. So um, the four properties, including Map 42, Lot 80. Anthony Beatty. Yeah. Yeah, Anthony Beatty. Mm -hmm. Map 21, Lot 2, James Lewis. Map 23, Lot 21, Jane E. Parker. 
Map 53, Lot 32, Square J Realty. Those are the four, correct? Yeah, second on that. Any further discussion, suggestions? All those in favor? 4 0. Thank you very much, sir. So great you. job staying on top Thanks. of those. Yeah. Nice going. Mr. Chris, Mr. Patience, you thought you were first, but I threw you for your loop. Chris Hansen, Code Enforcement Officer for the Town of Raymond. Please introduce yourself. I'm Chris Hansen, Code Officer for the Town of Raymond, also a resident at 5 Crockett Road. Um, in front of you, you've got two separate uh, proposed permit applications, one for an electrical permit and one for an HVAC permit. Um, Currently, we do not require uh, electrical permits for single family homes or commercial. Um, I've had enough training in the last few years to feel comfortable in doing these inspections. I feel it's an important system that needs to be inspected. I currently do inspect the wiring of new homes and additions. Um, the additional work that would come with uh, this permitting would be I would be inspecting the meters, uh, the uh, service drops, and the outside uh, underground services that the currently CMP does. Um, they would also inspect them after I inspect them, but I'm very comfortable with that. I did it for three years when I was in Portland. I came to the board uh, several years ago and tried to do this, and uh, at the time it wasn't uh, received very well. So. Questions for Chris? Yeah. So we're not talking homeowner type stuff in the house. If somebody's doing a couple of, uh, any, any homeowner can do wiring in their own home. Right. If somebody's rewiring an addition, I want to know about it. Those are the ones that. But they, if they're doing an addition, they're getting a building permit. They're getting permit. a building permit, and I'm going to require them to get an electrical right. permit right. and a plumbing permit, right. whatever permits are necessary. Right. If you got somebody that's going to add a couple of outlets in a bedroom or an right. attic, um, I'm not going to require everybody to come in. Okay. Um, what's the threshold? I think common sense. Okay. Um, but a new single family home, a new addition, definitely got to get a permit. Okay. Um, so a building, a building <coughs> permit would trigger an electrical permit. Yeah. That's so. a that's a standard we're going to use, right? Correct. Because I don't want someone to have to get a permit to put in a light bulb. Yeah. No, we're not going to require permits for changing of fixtures yeah. or an outlet okay. or putting in a three-way switch. Okay. Um, homeowners are allowed to do that. All right. Um, if you want to know the, what the cost is going to be, I figured roughly uh, for a small single-family home um, with the service in the five cents a square foot, you're looking at uh, roughly $100. That's less than a plumbing permit. Oh. Um, for a bigger commercial job, you may get into a little bit bigger, but uh, a little bit more money. But it's not a huge bite out of their pocket when you're considering they're spending 185 to 200 thousand for a home or more. Yeah. Um, and most towns do this. Most every town around us does this. Yes, uh, the permits are very comparable to Poland, Gray, Wyndham. I polled all the towns, and I've been in conduct. Uh, communication with the state electrical inspector, Ray Stanford. He's been out with me on several inspections, commercial and single family. If I have any problems, he's going to help me out. Um, and my uh, backup in Poland, Nick Adams, is an electrician, so I've been getting a lot of feedback from him as well. So I think uh, I've got the qualifications to do it. I think it's something that's it's probably more important than a plumbing permit. Nobody dies from plumbing. People drown. die from electrical <laughs> wiring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Teresa? Okay, Chris. What do they do now? Just CMP comes in and inspects it when they're done? S I inspect the wiring in a new home. I look for the arc fault, GFI protection. I look to make sure the meter, uh, uh, the, the uh, electrical panel is marked and, and grounded. I do all that now at no charge. Um, CMP does the inspection of the service drop. But we, what we don't have is we don't have the record of who the electrician is. We don't, don't have that for the record for the future, whoever buys the home later on. This will keep, keep better record keeping, 
keep track. We'll make sure that we have licensed electricians doing the work. I've been on many jobs when I've asked the guy doing the work, can I see your license? And they're like, eh, bah, 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 because they're just somebody's friend that works for an electrician and they don't have a master's electrician's license. Well, so then you can, you can st and, and excuse my ignorance on this whole thing, you can stop him from doing oh, that, I have. right? And, and doing it. But on your license, too, does CMP charge for them coming out and inspecting? No. Well, not for inspecting, but right. they charge for the drop. So yeah, they it's charge included. for the drop. You're paying not for that You're drop. You're paying. <laughs> I, I guess the way I'm looking at this is it, it's another fee. It's another fee that we're charging to build in Raymond, is what it is. And after looking at this list that we're getting tonight, there's a lot of fees to do anything, is what it is. So, uh, not that your services aren't needed, I guess it is. It's just, it's almost to me like we're charging for everything. Everything. Well, I think, I mean, there is a service that happens. Chris still needs to inspect. Right. So his time is going out there and handles record keeping. Right, right. But so you do it's that It's all getting anyways. done. But we're not. He's not getting. We're not getting paid for his service to be out there on the job. The last time it was brought up here is because we were going to tax everything and charge for everything electrical, and I said I can't support that. This is a much more limited new construction it, it, safety issue. Yeah. Some of these permits are going to be 50 bucks. Right. I mean, I, I just gave you an example of a whole house. Yeah. I mean, $45, $35 for a little addition, uh, I don't think is unreasonable. Right. And uh, the HVAC permits, I'm talking uh, uh, $35 to $55 for a $10,000 right. new installation of a mini, uh, uh, mini split pump, heat right. pumps. I mean, we're getting, the, the technology is really advancing on right. the HVAC systems. We have a lot of solar systems go in, yep. and they need to be inspected. Um, there's a lot can go wrong with a solar system or a mini split system. Sam, any you have any questions? No, I just want to uh, add to this that these are not unusual fees. I mean, this is not unusual. No, I think we're on, I went on the low side of the fee schedules. Yeah. As, as someone who, is on the other side of these permits, uh, one of the more important things I see here is when someone comes in to do a project, this helps them understand what's expected up front. I agree. That it's not going to be Uncle Joe, yeah. that you need, a, you know, we need to see a license to protect your neighbors as much as anything. Mm. Um, uh, you, you hear all the time, you know, most of the fires are caused by faulty wires. Mm. If it's not, you know, a drunk cigarette, right? I mean, it's a often that's the number one cause. So, um, I do think this pared down, get the contractor, get the license number of the electrician, is something that that I mean, I deal with all the time, and, and is fairly reasonable. I expect it. So, I, I guess it, this is a much simpler thing. Louise, uh, would this be for a non-residential? Introduce yourself. I'm sorry, Louise Lester, Ten Hartley Lane. Um, would this be for a, just for residences or if it, they had a freestanding?